Peace and Pan Africanism, peace and Pan Africanism. Peace and Pan Africanism, peace and Pan Africanism. Peace and Pan Africanism, peace and Pan Africanism. Good Garvey Day to my continental Africans, good Garvey Day to my Africans in Europe, my Africans in Asia, my Africans in Australia, my Africans in the South Pacific. Good Garvey Day to my Canadian Africans, my Caribbean Africans, my South American Africans, my Central American Africans. Good Garvey Day to my American Africans. Good Garvey Day to my Los Angeles Africans. This is King Kong Consciousness coming to you live and direct from Hollywood, California. Hollywood, California. Hollywood, California. I want to see all my Newark, New Jersey Africans this Sunday. I want to see all my Newark, New Jersey Africans this Sunday at the Source of Knowledge Bookstore, 867 Broad Street in Newark, New Jersey, this Sunday, September 15th, for the Black Book Giveaway from 12 to 6, Dr. Umar Speaks at 2. I want to talk about the fact that my big brother Tyrese Gibson was arrested. I want to talk about the fact that they arrested my big brother Tyrese Gibson. And I believe, brothers and sisters, let me say this right now. I believe that Tyrese Gibson was arrested because he spoke out against Kamala Harris and the Democratic Party doing nothing for black people. I repeat, Tyrese Gibson, Hollywood actor and singer, Tyrese Gibson was arrested for speaking out against Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and the Democratic Party not doing anything against black people. If he never spoke out against the Democratic machine, if he never spoke out against the Democratic plantation slaves, if he never spoke out against Joe Biden and Kamala Harris taking care of everybody except black people, Tyrese would have never been arrested. Let me read the story, brothers and sisters. Tyrese was arrested Monday morning. The singer was detained for unpaid child support, $73,000 for his five-year-old daughter with ex-wife Samantha Lee. An hour later, Byron reported that the father of two miraculously found the money and was arranged for it to be paid. He will likely be home for dinner. TMZ corroborated the report, noting that Tyrese was set to pay $10,000 a month starting April the of 2023 so this arrest was made because he held in contempt of court ahead of the arrest Tyrese posted a series of photos of his two daughters Shayla and Soraya the love that a father can have for his children quite can't be explained whatever the outcome is today I am and will forever be their father okay Tyrese revealed that he might be arrested claiming that Lee's legal team Adam Gleekin and William Alexander were besties with Judge Kevin Farmer, who presided over the case. All these names are very public knowledge because they are all very public judges and lawyers demanded that I come to court, cancel my press media for my 1992 movie and my new Beautiful Pain album interviews. The singer wrote in a sense deleted post. He noted that he'd been appealing all of the judge farmer's rulings because he tried to get him thrown off the bench twice. This is also the judge who handled Tyrese's divorce from Lee. And in those proceedings, the singer accused the judge of collusion. So Tyrese, my brother, uh, we standing with you. Hold your head. We hope that you win. Everything comes out right. But we have to do something about child support court. Black women, we know you need money to take care of the children when the relationship doesn't work out. Black women, we know you need money to take care of the children when the relationship doesn't work out. Black women, we know you need money to take care of the children when the relationship doesn't work out. But y'all have to stop weaponizing child support against black men. Stop trying to destroy black men over child support. I want to do a couple tap ins for child support. Do I have any black men or women who want to speak on child support? I don't have a lot of time. I got to get ready for my interview. Who wants to speak on child support one time? Who wants to tap in and speak on child support? Only child support. Do I have any brothers who want to speak on the weaponization of child support against black men? Tap in right now. Tap in. Do I have any sisters who want to speak on the weaponization of child support against black men? Tap in right now. Tap in right now. The Serata going twice. Sister Serata going three times. Where you at, Serata? You pulling up or not, chocolate, beautiful queen? Are you pulling up? I got to see you. There you go. How you doing? Where you based at, Serata? Where you at? 
I'm in San Francisco, California. San Fran, so you're a few hours from me. All mm -hmm. right. What is your take on this child support piece, Tyrese? They wanted Tyrese to cancel his interview for his new movie, his new album. He said he couldn't do that. He also mm -hmm. judge his friends with his ex-wife's lawyers. What is your opinion on child support? Are black women taking it too far or do black men just not want to be responsible? What is your opinion? So yeah, my take on it is it's just ridiculous, especially if you have a black man who's in his child's life. It's like, that's really for somebody who's a deadbeat. So if you know your child who is Tyrese, who's known to be active in your child's life, why are you asking for that 10K when he's already there implementing as a father? I grew up with a single father and my mom still had my dad on child support. And I saw my dad more than I saw my mom and she was getting money. So it's a really, really corrupt system that really goes back to dates of life, you know, the broken black family system to really just detach black fathers. And so what I say is like, just make sure if you're not going to be in a relationship with this person, at least some things are written down in place to make sure if the union doesn't work out, the woman's not coming back at you for money. Because a lot of times it's for upsetness because the relationship didn't work out or so on. So but I just it's think really, it's really a revenge debt. That's what it really is. Correct. Yeah. Because you wasn't asking him for money when the relationship was good. You guys were with a child, all giddy, but now the relationship ends, and it's like, okay, I understand there needs to be accountability to help, but if he's active as a father, he's going to be active paying diapers or whatever else. Do you think black women are assertive enough in holding other black women accountable for trying to destroy men over child support when they know it's not about money, it's more about revenge? Do you think black women do enough to hold other black women accountable? Not enough. Not enough. They'll be like, oh, okay, uh, you're getting money from your baby daddy. Okay, good. Let's go out. Let's go shopping. Like the money is on purposes for your child, not for yourself. So I don't think we hold them accountable to sisters who are like using it as a pity form at all. Thank you for tapping in, gorgeous queen. Thank you so Thank much. You. Be blessed, mom. Who tapping in? We talking about child support. Who tapping in? If you for child Child support, if you against child support, talk to me, family. Talk to me. We tap in on child support. Where you at, my queen? Tap on in. Going once, tap on in. Going twice. Where you at, lovely? The real estate queen. Where you at? Hi, Dr. All right. How you doing? How are you? That beautiful. Where you at? I'm in Jersey. I'm so in part I'm of Jersey. New Jersey. So you need to I'll come to the source of knowledge on Sunday yeah. for the Black Book giveaway. I, you know what? I just told my husband that, um, but I'm 30 weeks pregnant, so I can't oh, really go. Congratulations. You might can't come. You yeah, might have that so at the book store. We might got to lay you out over the books, my sister. Right, right. Um, What's your so I spoke take to you on like, house support thing, my queen? So, yes. Um, I have actually two, um, two children before prior to this one yeah. um yes so i feel like in regards to child support i feel like some black men just does not want to take accountability after the, the relationship is over like i gave uh both of my baby fathers um leeway like i really asked them like okay since you're not in the household anymore what are we gonna do how are we gonna you know take care of this and i'm very successful i am a real estate agent um, and, it, and sometimes I feel like that is a a bad thing and a good thing because I, obviously I can support the children and they know that. But also it's like, okay, well, you can support the children. Why do you need my money? Or why do, um, you know, I still have to pay for certain things. Um, so it's, it's, it's a hardship and it's, it's really sad, but now it's what a about hardship. Because I do hear you when you say, that sometimes when men can no longer be with the woman or they don't like the way the relationship broke up, they'll try to punish the woman by not financially supporting the child. What about when the man is financially supporting the child or spends more time with the children than the mother and child support becomes a tool of revenge and punishment against the man by the woman? In your experience with all the black women you know and have heard about, which one do you think is the primary issue? Is it men not wanting to be responsible financially, or is it women trying to punish good fathers for no longer wanting to be with them? I feel like, honestly, it's a little bit of okay. both, because it all yeah. depends on that specific relationship and how that actually went. Like, um, I only could speak for myself, 
Like my first relationship, it was more of, you know, it was more of, okay, you're going to help or you're not going to help. And it was just like, no, they're not helping at all. The second one, um, he's, he's, he's very, he's very responsive, but he's not, um, I can really say that he's not reliable. So he needed to be on child support to be forced okay. to do something. Um, uh, because it's not, it's, it was a, a reliability factor. Um, with other women, sometimes, yes, they do do that. They are bitter when they see someone else with the person that they really loved and they want to be with. And it was more like a, as a contact factor. But with my friends, honestly, we're all are successful. And it, it, it doesn't play out that way. Oh. It plays out more of, well, you know, why, why we have to do this if you have it all set up. So that's okay. what I'm dealing with. Got you. Thank you, mom. But thank you for that wisdom. Thank I appreciate you so much. It. I'll see you on it's Sunday before I have my husband go. Do we <laughs> Love know you. if it's a boy or it's, an, it's another king. I got three kings, Dr. Umar. Oh, man, so and, you're a king, man. And, yeah, and let me tell you something. I'm I'm actually deliberating. I, we want to move to Delaware um, okay. for for your they, school. So when the school opens, to my school then. Yeah. They, they're going to come to your school. Not might. Yes, they're going to yes, come. Yes, so I'm yes, waiting yes, for everything to come in. All right. Thank you so Wait. much. Um, all right now. <laughs> Y'all heard that, my beautiful African sisters? Have your sons and move to Delaware. Have your sons and move to Delaware. Have your African kings and bring them to the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey RBG International Leadership Academy in Wilmington, Delaware, brothers and sisters. Who tapping in? Who tapping in? Mimi, where you at, Mimi? Hi, Dr. Omar. Mimi, where you at, Mimi? What's I'm it? right here. I'm leaving out the house. I know we was on the line not too long ago, but it got disconnected. Okay. What up? Uh, Chicago, right, Mimi? Yeah, I'm going to show you around Chicago. Okay, what's up? Uh, we talking about child support. What's your think on child support? Are black women using child support to punish the fathers or are fathers just not trying to be responsible financially? Because Tyrese got locked up for not paying his child support. Yeah, I, and I did see the, a clip of the Tyrese um, interview. Wait, he paid it, though. He paid it. He got right out. He's a responsible father, but they tried to make him miss his interviews for his new movie. And yeah, his but new it's, they tried to it's a little both for the child support because I do see girls that... Um, that um pretty much um want to um, put the gas on the child support because they um may be considered jealous or whatever like if the guy moving on okay and then it's also but then it's also oh, yeah, so, um, i'm on the phone with I'm dr on, omar i'm on the phone say with hey you. to dr omar hey, hey how you doing there beautiful all right Hi. Dr. Omar, she she real ghetto. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm cut it cut it. We in Chicago. But um right. so I do see why the girls get off that get off that conversation. We're on the phone with Omar. This serious. Now, the phone froze. <laughs> so the girls in Chicago. Uh, so they do both. Uh, so they get jealous when the guy um uh, moving on. So they do it out of like um, malicious yeah. intent. Oh, I got my baby on the phone, girl. Hello. Okay, I'm coming in. So they do it out of malicious intent, and then they also do it because the guys, because it's a lot of guys here in Chicago, they don't like to take care of their kids. <laughs> Why you say that? They don't. They don't like nah, to take my care of their kids. Chicago brothers, they, they pay their child support. Cut it out. No, I promise you they don't. They Chicago people is different from the other people in the world. I promise you. It's like everybody Chicago is Chicago is his own country, huh? It's I his love, own country. It's his own Chicago. world. Like Chicago made me famous. I like Chicago. I like Chicago too because when I get away from Chicago, I get homesick. But Chicago is his own world. Like and it's bad out here. Like I got PTSD real bad. I even have to start seeing the counselor. Okay. Well, thanks for so, tapping in, my queen. I'm going to get ready to run. Thank you for that wisdom. Okay, okay babe. Okay. Bye.
tap season. We got two more tap ins. Have your when you have your sons move to Delaware so they can come to the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. We're my Chicago Africans. I ride with Chicago September 18th. It's my 14 year anniversary. I blew up from Chicago. I am Chicago's favorite adoptive son. Yasa Senegalese, I'm in the building. Harold Washington Center, I'm in the building. Such a gym going once. Such a gym going twice. Such a gym. And where you at, such a gym? Where you at, my queen? Hey, Hello. beautiful. Love, love the natural hair. Where you at, New Oh, York? thank you, thank you. In New York. New York City. That's the yes, beat. traveling what's to school. Y'all going to see the bus in the background. So right. what's, what's going on with child support crisis in New York? Are sisters trying to punish men for not wanting to be with them? Or are brothers just don't want to take care of their children? Where you at on the child support crisis? I honestly feel like it's trying to punish them. Because I just, I don't know, I feel like on a grand scale of things, number one, I feel like women should wait to even have kids until you're married. So the fact that we're doing all of this without marriage is already a red flag. <laughs> That's one. Um, two, I think it's uh, this new hip hop society, whatever that's like uh, making it seem like uh, baby mothers, baby fathers, like this is the new thing, like it's a wave. And I feel like that's really brainwashing. And then you have like the sexy red, so I put them on child support or whatever. It's like, it's all just, um, I just feel like it's all wrong to be honest. Yeah. I feel you, I feel you. <laughs> um, do you think we would ever be able to create our own child support system in the black community without having to go to white government? Do you think that's something that's possible? Ideally, I do, right? But here's the thing. I feel like you would need to get all black people together to band together, right? And it's like, how do we get them to, to go to that stage? I'm not too sure. But ideally, I mean, yeah, I mean, that would be great. But I don't know. I feel like it is weaponizing. I feel like it does. It's also a form of way to keep the black men down, to emasculate them. And I, I, I don't know where we go from here. I got you. Yeah. Thank you for wisdom, my queen. Be careful out there. Problem. All right. Thank you, you too. My love. We have too many black women out here for brothers to be bunny hopping. We have too many black women out here for brothers to be bunny hopping. We have too many beautiful black women out here for brothers to be bunny hopping. Who tapping in? I got one more tap in, one or two more tap ins, and then I got to go link with my man Nick Cannon. One or two more tap ins. Sister Nicole going once. Sister Nicole going twice. Sister Nicole going three times. How you doing, beautiful Sister Nicole? Where you I'm at good. in the world? I'm good. I'm in the DMV in Maryland. Say that again. In the DMV, oh, the DMV in Maryland. DMV, okay. Yes, yeah. indeed. But what's your take so, on child support wars? Are black women just being too thirsty for money, greedy? They want to punish the men for not being with them? Or black men trying to punish the women by not paying and they just don't want to be accountable? Where you at on this? I think there's a mixture of both. I disagree with the last sister who said marriage is the answer because I was married. I had three children in my marriage. And when we got divorced, I didn't go after child support because I did not want the system, all of that, to have to tell us how to raise our kids. That was a, a strong conviction for me. And it was used against me. I've definitely regretted it because the struggle has been real for me with three, post-marriage, post-divorce, and so I think there's a group that fits the narrative that's been said to this point, but I don't think that's all of us. There are some who genuinely want to work together and raise our kids and do what we should, even if the marriage or the relationship didn't work. And you don't always get, you know, you don't always get buy-in to that. And if you don't, then you're forced to go that route, which is something to this moment I don't want to do because I don't feel like it's needed. I don't want to uh, the system to have to tell us how, what to do with our children and how to be responsible. It's not needed. It shouldn't be needed. But in some cases, it is. You don't have women out here that are all of us that are trying to use the system to keep our brothers down. That's not the case. For Let me ask you a question, Queen, because you decided not to go the child support route. Right. But you could have. Right. In your experience with our Black women, 
why was it different for you? Because a lot of sisters, you know, I was in child support. I'm currently paying child support for my 13 year old a beautiful daughter my eldest is 22 so that child support discontinued a few years ago but i paid for her since she was six months old maybe three three months old her mother took me immediately because she wanted me to marry her and when i didn't marry her child support became the punishment uh why were you different what is it about a lot of sisters who they run straight to child support as a means of trying to punish the men the ones who do some have to go because the right. men are not being responsible that wasn't my problem i was taking care of my children i was put on child support because i didn't marry the mother right. uh what made you different like what is something men should look for when we're dating women that let us know that if this don't work out she may try to punish you with child support well i think a lot of it has to do with where they come from i think vetting a partner has a lot to do with where they come from. Meet their mm -hmm. parents, find out about their story. I grew up in a single parent household. My mother my father were college sweethearts. They got divorced when I was very young. My mother remarried when I was five. So I watched how my mother navigated my situation with her ex-husband, my father. And so that was a very important blueprint for me in terms of doing your best, and not that they were perfect at it, but doing your best to work together so that it didn't require going that route okay and it wasn't always successful but i think that was a really important part of my perspective right was what i saw now the opposite can equally be true you can have someone that came from a horrible traumatic you know toxic environment and make the choice to have the opposite because of the the effects that had on them so it's one of those things where finding out the history i believe is a really big part of adequately vetting a partner finding out where, where they came from, what kind of environment they were raised in, what type of values that produced in them, and as a result, what do they want in their parenting journey? And asking the questions, if we get married and it doesn't work out, then what? Nobody gets married with the intention to get divorced, but it happens. The statistics are wildly accurate, more than half, right? So then having the conversation about where did you come from? How did that affect you? What do you want futuristically? And the what ifs, if this doesn't work, what's the plan? If we are equally committed to the children that we bring into this world, regardless of how our relationship may twist and turn, right? And of course, all this is hypothetical, but I think a lot of these conversations aren't being had prior to marriage or prior to non-marriage that is sexual, right? Either way, they're very important discussions that I don't think we're having so that we're going in blind. And then if you're dealing with someone who already has children, that is your blueprint. And mm -hmm. women do this all the time. Mm -hmm. it, it blows my mind how women will believe whatever story because we're just so desperate to have a man that you're not vetting. You know, if you if you want a part of the breakup of that relationship, you need to sit down with that woman and ask, what type of father is he, right? What type of relationship do you have with him as a co-parent? Not anything romantic, assuming the integrity of that is intact and you guys are done, you're co-parenting. What does that look like? Because if that is not intact, and then you go and have a kid with him and expect things to be different, then who was really bamboozled here? You know what I'm saying? Like, we can't put all that on the men. Like, we have a lot of responsibility as women. And again, you talked about this earlier. Are we holding one another responsible? The answer to that in large part let is me, no. And it isn't just about question. child support. Either. Great. Let me ask you this before I let you go, my queen. Some brothers argue the reason why they're going to the snow bunnies is because if it don't work out, the snow bunnies are less likely to put them on child support. They're not as vindictive mm -hmm. as black women if the relationship doesn't work. Uh, do you agree with that? Is that necessarily true? Do you think white women take it a little easier on the brothers who are not at the top of the pay chain? Mm -hmm. Or is that just an excuse to snow bunny hop? I think both. I think it's definitely an excuse for the bunny hopping. I, I don't. Okay. I think the laundry list of those is forever, right? The excuses. But I do think there's some merit to that argument. But in order for us to give merit, we have to talk about why. White women are not exposed to the type of trauma we are. White women don't know what it's like. Most of them were born into the privilege of being white and female. So the idea of needing a court system to make your partner, your ex-husband, your boyfriend, whoever he is, show up for your children conceptually is foreign to most white women. So that's not something that they're running towards because that's not a part of their struggle. So I don't believe to have that conversation in part without the backstory, right? The type of trauma that most of us come from, the, type, the fact that most of us come from single family backgrounds, right? We watched our mothers struggle. Most of us, you know, not most, the, the statistics are high of those of us that did not 
not come from two parent environments. So we've already got a predisposure, right, to the struggle that's involved. If you saw your mom struggle as a single parent, then if you have a baby with someone who you think might not be a good dad, running to child support as your safety net, I'm not saying it's right, but I'm saying there's a, a backstory involved in that that is not the, the story of our white counterparts. It's just not. So to have that discussion without talking about all the pieces is just not fair because they're not up for the struggle we are. And most of them, if the men don't come through, they have dads, they have moms, they have family support. Ah, they don't that, have to depend on them. There we go. They have that financial there network. We, Good point. That's we go. The people that, that have come crazy. through for me in my post-divorce journey are my parents. My mm -hmm. mom, my dad have had to do a lot for me and for my children, and they shouldn't have had to, but I'm an anomaly in that respect, right? Most of the women I know that have single parent, that have the single parent experience don't have parents that either can or some of them, their parents are already gone, right? So they're not in a position like the village concept that most white people come from. We, most of us don't come from that. Yeah. Right. So that, that's another part of it, too, as to why the child support system is sometimes utilized. And I'm not I'm not an advocate for it because I know some really good fathers who've been taken extreme advantage of by it. But what? again, I'm on the opposite end. I didn't do it. And I was definitely yeah. taken advantage of yeah. for that. Thank you for that, my queen. Great wisdom. You're welcome. Great wisdom. You're welcome. Thank you, Dr. Right. Noir. Take Bye. care. All right. I'm going to end with a brother. Brothers tap in. I need a strong brother. I hope we don't get no Negro. We need somebody who could break this down. Black man, where y'all at? Black man, where y'all at? Let me go to pure vibes only. Let me see if pure vibes can represent for the unapologetically African alpha male anti-Snow Bunny kingdom. Pure Yo. vibes, how you doing, my brother? What's going on, dog? How you feeling? Where you at in the Lord, world? Baltimore, oh, Maryland. What's going on? Well, or Maryland. Shout out to the DMV. My brother, you're going to be the last person because I got to get ready okay. for the Canon interview. You heard from the sisters. Okay. My question to you, as it was to them, are black men uh, irresponsible and they don't want to financially man up for the kids so the women got to take them to court or are black women using child support as a weapon against black men who left them in the relationship so is this about revenge okay. for the woman or is this about a lack of responsibility for the men where you stand at i think it's a duality i think it's a little bit of both i know a lot of females who kind of take advantage of a lot of guys but i know a lot of guys who i literally have to call the ski mask gang and be like yo you're not taking care of your kids literally i know this one dude who i work with he haven't seen his kids in six years he's 25 mm. and it's ridiculous and you it's sure for the other is keeping him away right Okay. Yeah. No, okay. the mother, I talk to the mother all the time. She want him. She just don't care. Okay. okay. She just want to be out and about, about being in the streets. I know this one girl who literally posts on Instagram every time she get a check, we going to the club. So it's a balance. Like, it's kind of like a lot of girls are like that. A lot of guys are like that. So it's kind of like we just need some type of structure and unity so we can figure out what to do to stop letting this happen over and over again because both sides are being taken advantage mm. of in the child support system you, you i'm a father right, of the, the white man system. the white man is and basically it's really hard you, you said the white man again? the white man basically got us fighting each other while he played referee like like everything else yeah. clearly like everything else literally on every single structure foundation that the black community is going through we are being put against each other and the child support system is no different gotcha. it's a literally exact they, they literally play in the same handbook just putting in a different section of which is going to be we're going to put them against each other in housing. We're going to put them against each other with children. We're going to put them against each other in politics. Literally every single system, they're doing the same thing, but they just using the same old card, just putting us against each other. It's crazy. Appreciate that comment, brother. Be safe down there and be more. Oh, of course, man. Y'all have a good day. Peace. All right, God. Let me do one more, brother. That brother spoke. Let me get one more alpha male. I need another unapologetically African anti-Snow Bunny alpha male. Do we have another unapologetically ant African anti-Snow Bunny alpha male out there? Brother Bryson going once. Brother Bryson going twice. Brother Bryson, where you at, King? Dr. Peace Umar, what's good? Peace and love. Where you at in the world, brother? 
I can't see you, but I saw you earlier. I'm in the Bronx. BX, BX, what's your take on this old child support thing, brother? Are the brothers not responsible or are the women just bitter? What's up with child support? It's definitely a mix. I would say you got some bitter women out there who don't really, you know, have their eyes focused on creating a real black family. But you also have some brothers out there who definitely don't even know what that looks like. So I feel like it's going to have to take some time for people to get educated to actually learn what a real family structure would look like. Now, when it doesn't work out, though, uh, why can't we agree on how much to pay versus how much time to spend with the child? Why is it always a lot of conflict involved? Is this just bitter endings or, you know? Uh, uh, now, that's simple. That's because you could use children as, uh, you know, pawns, whether it's an emotional thing. You know, you could use them in times uh, like financial situations. You know, children kind of get like the worst portion of failed relationships because like the brother just said, the white man has a foot within the structure to hold, to put black people against each other, especially within the relationship dynamic. And you touched on this, you educated me about this on how it, you know, goes back to the 1970s. Yeah. 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 What? Yo, it, first of all, it's crazy. I'm on live, not to interrupt you, doctor, but I'm on live with Dr. Umar <laughs> Ifatunde yes, Ogunkade. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. BX, what up? Yo, the prince of pan-Africanism, man. No doubt, man. I tell you, I can't wait to meet you in real life. Yes, sir. You know, obviously it was real life, but I have been awoken by a lot of your education. You are the prince of pan-Africanism. I tell everybody about you. People are probably sick of me talking about you. I appreciate you. Too. But I, much respect. Thank you. Much respect. Be safe out there in the BX. We'll see each other soon. Likewise, right, sir. Brother. Stay blessed. Be safe now. All right. Respect. Let's go with one more alpha male. I got to get ready for this Nick Cannon interview. I got to get ready for this Nick Cannon interview, but I'm going to do one more unapologetically African anti-snow bunny alpha male. Can I get one more unapologetically African anti-snow bunny alpha male? Tap in, fellas. We're going to do one more. I need an unapologetically African anti-snow bunny alpha male. Where you at, brothers? Where you at, brothers? Tap in, tap in, tap in, tap in, tap in. Podcast interviews, 215-989-9858, 215-989-9858, 215-989-9858. Yes, sir. <clears throat> I might got to take a sister if I don't get a king. Somebody tap in. One more tap in. One more tap in. I got to run on out to Nick Cannon. One more tap in. One more tap in. What a tap is. That I don't see no tap-ins. <laughs> 